Welcome back to Pro League, everybody. We're going to have an ace match here between MVP and Startail Yoey. We already have our players decided and ready. It's going to be Losera versus Alive. The rematch from rematch. game number two. Uh, better map for Zerg, I think most people would argue, than the map we saw last time, which was Merry-Go-Round. Uh, Losera did a weird build, but Alive did crush him. He played a bit greedy. And uh, we'll have to see how the rematch goes, because I think we're going to have... In my opinion, though, a much more standard game than what yeah. we saw last time. Let's see the predictions here. Three of us do go for a live. Me, uh, Yude Hyun, the analyst, as well as Kanata. But you and Moonlight, as well as the Monday caster, do go for Losira. So still banking on the fact that Losira kind of didn't play the best game ever. But uh, I would argue that Alive, I think he's going to get a lot of confidence from that first win. And he, he looked pretty solid in general. He didn't play his best game. But... Um, I think as long as Lucira is playing badly today against Terrans, I think Alive could easily take another game here. Well, guys, let's jump into the game. It's going to be Lucira versus Alive on Overgrowth. Down here in the bottom left in the teal from Team MVP, it is Losira. A.K.A. Speedy Hands. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <Stop writing me. laughs> I don't know about alive. that wolf. I'm not sure if that's actually his nickname. Yeah, he's quite he's quite famous for that. Speedy she hands. got surprised for being on camera, even though she basically wasn't even on camera. Over she there. wasn't on camera. She's just being... She's like, my hand is on camera. Oh, no. Pretty All much. Right, relax. Like <laughs> You sit back down, young woman. She'll be fine. Um, I don't. I don't think we're gonna see like a proxy out of alive on this map. If it, it's if, too if obvious, this were Maru, I think he'd proxy. Oh, it, it, <laughs> he'd already, the SV would already be going. Um, if it were Maru, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, alive already saw that we we saw a drone scout out of Losira last time, and this time it's a two-player map. So I think he's like. No way am I going to proxy here. It's just too obvious. And uh, Losira, not drone scouting this time. At least not yet. If he plans on doing it, be a bit of a yeah, late drone scout. That would be a, a weird late drone scout. He's just going to put this down for the hatchery first. Losira looks a little bit nervous. He's doing some uh, talking to himself, doing some twitching earlier. Hmm. He likes to do that. He does. It's high stakes match. Yeah. Both of these teams are like on the cusp of uh, playoffs, you know, usually most of the time. Like we saw Startel Yoey actually make it, uh, possibly on the back of life. Uh, they ended up not showing for their playoff match, which is really unfortunate. Who knows how far yeah, they could have sucks, maybe gone. Man. I wish we got to watch that one. Jin Air versus Startel. Would have been very nice. But, uh, you know, it didn't happen. And. You know, MVP got fifth, so you know they were really close to making the playoffs. Yeah. But I feel like these two teams are like, oh, I got to get the leg up as fast as possible right away, especially against you know these teams. They're they're both like medium tier teams, so to get an early win against a medium tier team is important because if you lose to say SKT later, you're like, well, I lost to SKT, but most people do. Uh, mm. At least I got a win against a medium tier team. Yeah, exactly. That's why you see sometimes you know teams face a lot of hard teams earlier on in the round, but then they taste the, face the weaker teams later on. They make like this big comeback, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, Samsung's playing so well." Well, no, it's like they beat MVP in Prime, and yeah, and it's, you know, incredible miracle last season. Yeah. <laughs> so Losira, he does a very greedy build. In fact, even before we're seeing any proxy or seeing anything out of his opponent's base, he goes for hatchery into two extra drones into gas into pool. I think this is the same build that he did last time, but he drone scouted last time. Yeah, it gives him a little bit of extra economy to not do that in this case. And last time he also made, uh, I think, six lings. This time he's going to lings a little bit later and going to ward this Reaper off easily. Be careful not to lose any lings. That one drone is getting pretty low. Okay, there he goes. Nice micro. Oh, almost lost a ling too. Wants to keep these lings alive until that queen comes out. It's going to be much better at holding this off. Okay, the queen comes out. Does do its first inject first, and now it's going to get to work. 
Reaper has gotten one kill. I think uh, on a Ling right, so no big yeah. deal. Very standard opening so far. Mm -hmm. Same thing out of Alive so far. Just making the factory. He's going to swap that and make some Hellions. Probably a small force, although Overgrowth is a bit of a... I guess a, a smaller map, although on, on the last one, they were on merry-go-round, right? Yes. So um, in the positions they were, I guess it, it wasn't the longest rush distance either, but I guess you could, you could do something aggressive. It just it just doesn't strike me as a live style. Well, Alive's going to get use these two Marines we saw last time to what? actually kill the Overlord this time. 22 lanes. What? Whoa, okay, well, this is already a big uh, big change. Yeah, this is Losira saying, okay, I, I think I've identified what you're doing here. Killing that Reaper gonna kill you. would have been so huge. Now he has to actually kill it with two links. If he fails at this... Now you should. They've got speed. Okay. Gonna go down, and here we go. Huge swell of links. No bunker. This is, he has to do a lot of damage with this. This is so much of a commitment. Checks the other watchtower. Make sure he's safe. Hides this from the Hellions. This is going to completely circumvent the Hellions. Which, by the way, the Hellions are out of position. Those are going to be really useful at defending. But not if they're not home. Oh, and those two Lings actually baiting those Hellions out here. Here we go. The Lings are coming in. Two Hellions coming back, but they're going to get caught. One Hellion gets caught. Second one should fall as well. He's got two more. And this is going to be a lot of damage because it gets into the main. Now he's to micro two sets of Hellions here. SCV is already off the line in the main base. At the natural, he does finally surround and kill oh. the last of those two Hellions. And now SCVs need to get pulled here. Back at home, he's droning. He's up to 34 Harvesters. He's doing a decent amount of damage. This is so much mining time lost right now, and that's the biggest thing. Two of those mules at the natural get delayed for a long time. He does only kill three SCVs, though. But then again, it wasn't like he made 40 lanes, right? He only made, like, 22. It wasn't the most gigantic commitment to aggression ever. Like you were saying, he droned up pretty heavily behind this. He's now up to 40. Yeah. So he's doing pretty well for himself. He's doing well for himself. It was a third CC. Which I think he was expecting. It was part of the reason why he ended up doing this build. Um, even though his Overlord got denied, I think it was a pretty good assumption. The uh, <clears throat> the really important thing to note here, actually, in my opinion, besides those SCV kills on the lost mining time, is that he actually killed a lot of Hellions, which means that the third base that he's getting right now and that huge swell of drones he just made are going to be a lot easier to defend because there's only three Hellions left on the map. So he doesn't really have to worry about big Hellion pushes. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, those sorts of harassment attacking his queens and the poking at that third base. He's totally safe. I think that's one of the only times I've ever seen the Observer, like, zoom in on something a player was doing wrong, and the player was like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'll put that right back to work now. <laughs> Usually we just see it, and it's, like, awkward, like, oh, he's got six drones on gas. Let's watch this for a while, and it never gets fixed. Yeah. They do eventually fix a little bit later. But Usually off it's camera. It's rare that we don't see it on camera, yeah. or that we do see it on camera, rather. That's, uh, that's certainly true. Well, a huge swell links again here. This time he's going to have a Baneling Nest, though. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a, a lot wall. of links. He's stopping at 42 drones. He's not even going to saturate that for, uh, that third base. There's a wall here. The problem is that this is going to get scouted by a floating third CC, maybe. Oh, my God. This is actually going to get scouted what? by the CC, I think, dude. He scans there. He sees no lair. And he's like, uh, hmm. Okay. All right, wait, wait. We need to see his vision. Did he see it? No, he didn't see it. I don't think. Am I wrong? No, I don't think he saw it. He's sending Marines over here. Maybe he saw, like, some lings. Regardless, he needs to, like, send something over there to make sure his base is okay. Okay, well, now he's going to know. Okay. Well, knowing is only half of the battle, man. That is a ton of banelings <laughs> here. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough Terran units. His wall is down. He doesn't even lift the bunkers. He no or rather, the supply that was in no. He's not controlling his units in the middle of the map. He's got a lot of Marines uh, up here on the high ground. He needs to uh -oh. spread those. They need to spread. They need to spread. Okay. Good micro so far, but this is just too many links. I this think is too many links. He has so many links to follow this up as well. Oh, I think this this is gonna be it, man. I this think is just too many right. links. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. There's no nothing. tanks, no widow mines, no AOE. Is he gonna fight against banelings with SCVs? There's a huge swell of links to follow this up as well, which is a big problem. Yeah. I mean, most of his army is now in those medevacs. <laughs> And uh, I think that's going to be it. I think I, you're I right. think uh, Alive was just playing way too greedy. And Losira saw it the first game and he lost to it. And this time he's like, nope, not going to happen again. GG. <laughs> wow. Very, really good read by Losira. And he looks really happy with himself. Really got to hand it to him. Very strong play for the map, for the player. He knew the build that he was doing. And uh, GG. GG indeed. Getting those well deserved high fives. Coming through for his team this time. I love when we get to see rematches and ace matches.
that's really cool to see adaptation. It's almost like you get to see game two of a best of three almost. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Marine King in Sojung's 10 questions, 10 answers did say that Losira is, in fact, the best player on their team right now. And I would agree. Today, even though he kind of had a flunky first game where I, in fact, lost faith in him and did vote for Alive in that last game, he was able to come out there and totally read li Alive like a book. He just went in there and he's like, hmm, here's the introduction. Here's the final chapter. Okay, I know how this build is going to end. I'm going to kill you before it even gets there. And he just executed that build so beautifully. Really got to hand it to Losera here. Yeah, that was a really greedy third base by Alive. It was like so greedy that it almost scouted the Bane Lakes. <laughs> and double engineering bay. It's kind of the way that uh, Marine King played as well and on King Sejong Station. And uh, Lee Nock wasn't able to punish him there. But, and uh, also, Lozier wasn't able to punish him in the first game, so this time he's like, no, that's not happening again. Sorry. You, you know uh, the, the character Samus that can turn into a morph ball? I yes, feel like Lucia, yes I, just, I, I, know, I know who Samus is. Well, <laughs> anyway, continue. I just, I feel like Lucia is, should just be able to, like, turn into a Baneling and roll out of the booth. <laughs> <laughs> he makes so many Banelings in all of his games. He is a big Baneling fan, like his uh, big brother God. Ness T, man. They're the Nest T they are the Nest T brothers back in the day, like the Baneling Bros. <laughs> the Nest T brothers. I meant to say Baneling Bros. I, I said Nest T brothers for some reason. <laughs> well he's he's pretty much like his little brother anyway. But guys, here are the results from today. MVP is able to take their win over Startail Yoey. Three to two. We do have our first ace match here of round number two in the first day. We do have Marine King winning his first game. Uh, against Leonok, bit of a shocker there, and then a live wins against Lucera, another shocker. But then Curious uh, shows us a very late game ZVP, his strength on Bonnie Research Station, one of our newer maps. And then Yowa takes a big one on Deadwing against Sant, for the ace match, and Lucera uh, flips the tables once again on Alive and wins the game. Yeah, very back and forth series, really exciting one. Um, would definitely recommend the Hero versus Curious game, my favorite by far. Out of these? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that game. I, I definitely agree with you. Recommend that one to your friends. Well, we are going to have an interview with...